Okay, so um, in this video, we're going to have a look at question 1.6, which deals with the smoking habits of UK residents. Um, so the information that they give us here is that a survey was conducted to study the smoking habits of UK residents. Um, and in that question, they give us a data matrix displaying a portion of the data collected in that survey. Um, so in that table, um, they there give us a symbol for um, British pound sterling, uh, which is in the gross income column. Um, and they tell us that six stands for the cigarettes, um, cigarettes that the people smoke per day, and NA refers to a missing component of the data. So that just stands for not available. Okay, so um, they ask us three simple questions that we need to answer. Um, the first one is, what does each row of the data matrix represent? Um, the second one is, how many participants were included in the survey? And the third one is, indicate whether each variable in the study is numerical or categorical. Um, if it's numerical, we need to identify whether it's continuous or discrete. Um, and if it's categorical, we there have to indicate if the variable is ordinal or non-ordinal. Okay, so um, behind me, we've just redrawn this table. Um, and we've made it a bit more South African. So in our gross income, we just converted the pounds to rand. So, and that K just means thousands. So this first value means that that person there is female, age 42, marital status is single, um, gross income is under 45,000 rand per year. She smoked, yes, the amount she smoked on a weekend is 12 cigarettes per day, and the amount she smoked on weekdays is the same, which is also 12 cigarettes uh, per day. Okay, so we just converted this table a little bit. Um, so there, gender, M stands for male, F stands for female, marital, S stands for single, M stands for married, and then smoking, yes, is for, um, Y is for yes, N is for no. Okay, so um, let's get started with the questions. Okay, so the first question they ask us is, what does each row of the data matrix represent? Um, so these are the rows. This is that, and each row actually represents a case. Uh, that's what each row represents. So each row represents a respondent in that survey. So this is the case, this is the person that they ask about their smoking habits. Okay, so that is what each um, row in the matrix means. Um, it's just our cases, which in this case is our respondents in our survey. Okay, so that's a sort of easy one to, to answer. Um, the second question they ask there is how many participants were included in the survey? So where we here we just have to look at this first row over there. So they, um, each respondent was given a number, an increasing number. So that's respondent number one, two, three, and it carries on until 1691. So this is um, the answer there. There were a total of 1,691 respondents um, in this survey. So that is the number of participants in this um, survey, which is also our total number of cases. Okay, so the last one, which is the more difficult one, is here they ask us for each one of these variables that we have over here, uh, we have to indicate whether the variable is um, numerical or categorical. If it's categorical, we need to figure out if it's ordinal. Um, if it's numerical, we need to figure out if it's continuous or discrete. Okay, so we're gonna start with the first one, which is gender. And here we can, to figure out um, what this variable is, we need to look at its value and what it represents and then just use a bit of common sense. So in this case, we have gender is either female or male. Um, F and M is definitely not numbers. So we know that gender, gender is categorical. So we can just here say categorical. So the next question now, seeing that it is categorical, is, is it ordinal? Is there a natural ordering from female to male or male to female? The answer there is definitely no. Uh, there's no way that we can say one is higher or lower than the other one. So this variable is just categorical. It's just a plain categorical um, variable. Okay, so we can now move over to the next one. Um, here they ask us age. And we can see our variables there, um, our variable text values of 42, 44, 53, up to 40. Um, so these are numbers. You can plainly see it's numbers. Um, age is a number, usually. So we can say that this one is numerical. So the question now is, is this continuous or is it discrete? Um, so it's, it's a tricky one. When you measure something like age, you can actually measure it as a continuous variable. You can say I am 31.5 years old, meaning I'm 31 um, years old in six months. But in this case, uh, we see it's just um, round numbers. It's just integers from 42, 44, 53, 40. Nowhere do they give decimal, decimal values. Um, and there's, it's not even a point zero. So in this case, we can assume that these variables are numerical and they're numerical discrete. 
So they're not continuous um, because there's no decimal places in them, nothing. It's, it's either 42, 44, um, 45. So it's been rounded to the nearest um, integer. Okay, so this one is numerical discrete. Okay, so the next one is marital status. Um, again, single, single, MS. So these are definitely not numbers. So we again know this is categorical. Categorical. Um, and now the next one to figure out is, is it ordinal? Is there ordering for this um, variable? And again, the answer there is no. Um, there's no natural ordering for single is higher than uh, married or married is higher than single. So it's just a categorical variable. Okay, so the next one is gross income. Um, so this is probably the most difficult one to do uh, because here we have numbers. They actually give us numbers, 45,000, 182,000. Um, so it might be tempting, tempting to say that this is a numerical variable, um, but we have to carefully look at each one um, of these observations. So here they tell us it's under 45,000. Here they tell us it's between 182,000 and 272,000. Here they say it's above 637,000. And at the bottom they say it's between 45,000 to 91,000. So even though they give us numbers, this is not a um, numerical variable. Um, easy way to check it is can we apply arithmetic to this variable? Can we say under 45,000 plus 182 to 272,000? Um, we cannot. We cannot plus that with that. that. That will give us a nonsense answer. Similarly, we can't plus above that with between that. So that's usually a sign that even though there are numbers in there, this is still a categorical variable. So the moment we see stuff like under and between, those are categories. One category is under 45,000, and that's a, another category is between 182,000 to 272,000. Another category is above 637,000. So these are categories. We cannot sum them, multiply them, or anything like that. So they're definitely categorical. So now the next part is, are they ordinal? So is there a natural ordering to these um, actual values? And there the answer is yes. Um, this variable is categorical, and it's ordinal. So why do we say it's ordinal? Uh, we say it's ordinal because there is actually a natural ordering in these variables. So we can still see that under 45,000 is less than between 182 and 272,000. So we can actually rank these categorical values from low to high. So our lowest category is going to be under 45,000. Our highest category is going to be above 637,000. And then these ones are going to be in between those ones. Um, so in this case, we can actually order our categorical values from the lowest to the highest one. So therefore, it's an ordinal categorical um, value. So again, this one is the trickiest one to do. Um, so if you're struggling with this, um, I suggest just go back to the textbook, um, to the relevant sections, carefully read through it, and then come back to this one and reanalyze this one. The next one we're going to look at is um, smoke, which again is an easy one. So there our values are yes or no. Um, so this would be, again, categorical. Categorical. So there we have to answer, is this ordinal? Um, as tempting as it is to say that not smoking is better than smoking, uh, we can't give this a natural ordering. Uh, we can't say that one is higher or lower than the other one. So in this case, this is just categorical. Um, that smoking, yes or no, is just a categorical variable. Okay, so the next one is the amount of cigarettes smoked over the weekend. Um, again, this is a little bit tricky because we have this sort of NA values in between that. So they tell us its amount, which immediately indicates that, okay, this maybe should be numerical. Uh, but then in between, they throw these NA values in. Um, so in this case, we would actually still say that this variable is numerical. Um, it's numerical. Numerical. So what do we do with the NA? Uh, we just say that's missing values. That happens with numerical data. Just because we have missing values, that doesn't transform a numerical variable into a categorical variable. So these are clear numbers. We can add them up. We can sum them. Um, so this is definitely a numerical variable. Um, and I mean, we could have maybe replaced NA with zero uh, because we can see that the people that smoke, um, that's no, they don't smoke. Therefore, there's not, no value for them. But technically, that can be zero because they smoke zero cigarettes because they're non-smokers. Um, so this is definitely a numerical variable. 
Um, so the other question is, is it continuous or is it um, discrete? So again, here we have these round numbers, 12, 6, 8. Uh, there's no decimal values or anything. So we can conclude that this is a discrete variable. Okay, so um, the last one then is the number that they smoke on weekdays. Um, and this is the same as the, amount, um, as the same variable that they smoke on weekends. So this again will be numerical. And the reason for that is that it's numbers that we can add, we can multiply, we do stuff with that. We have that NAs, but I mean we can just remove those observations from our data set, or we can replace them with zero. So this remains numerical, and again, this is discrete, because we don't see any decimal places or anything like that. So that is a numerical discrete variable. Okay, so just to run through all of it quickly, over here we have our um, gender variable, which is categorical, female, male, that's the easy one. Then we have age, bunch of numbers, so that's numerical discrete. Again, easy one. Here we have marital status, single, single, married, single, categorical. Um, here we have um, gross income, which is probably the most difficult one. So here we have numbers, but they are split into categories. So it's categorical, but those categories have an ordering to them, um, from low to high, so it's ordinal. Um, here we have smoke, yes or no, easy one, categorical. And then we have the amount of smoke on weekends, a bunch of numbers here with missing values, but that's okay, that happens. So this is numerical, it's discrete because there's no decimal places or anything. And then the same with the last one. 